Um, I call it this one, you know, 1% opportunities and 1% mindset because that's some of the things we're going to go over today. You know, it's a uh, it's a beautiful time that we're living in, but it's a dangerous time. And some of us getting rocked to sleep on a consistent basis because you're not allowing yourself to sit back, relax, and observe for what's going on. I found myself earlier, um, I was in this lounge, relaxing, eating, chilling, vibing, right? And I had to take some time and just observe. You know, I put the phone down. Actually, my phones had died, to be honest. And because my phones died, it allowed me to just stop and observe what everybody else in the room was doing. And I'm observing this very digital world. Those who wasn't high was just on the digital vibe. You understand me? Everybody's just in their phone and the behaviors have changed and been modified so much. We don't even realize it. But sometimes if we take that time to just observe reality around us, we can find problems and we can find solutions. And these become our business models. These give us insight, gives us intellect on what we should be paying attention to and what we should be doing next. You understand me? Like, I look at the fact that, hey, here I have two phones. I'm utilizing two phones, so I can have two numbers and I have two different data sets that I can put on each phone, right? But these phones, like, you gotta hold them up. You gotta FaceTime, you gotta look at people. The battery dies, like the phone itself, is a problem, right? So when we look at where technology will be, then that's why we understand that spatial reality um, is going to be the next big thing. We understand that virtual reality, things that take the that take up the things that take up space. You understand me? And just having digital assets that can do the exact things that we have. So the average Joe and average person, they just living. You're uh, a slave to the devices and the tools that other people come up with. So. You don't really overthink what's going on in reality. You're just waiting for what's to come. You're not thinking of, oh, how can I create business models? What are some of the issues that I can solve? And things of that nature. You understand me? That's not really the mindset that you may go upon when it comes to the world. But that's what the 1% does. You understand me? Now, me, I'm at a particular level of life. I don't think that I have to, you know, be the smartest person because the smart people, they create the tools. I just work to become the most creative person. You understand me? Because the creative person learns how to utilize the tools in the best manner. And so creative thinking and creative agency, creative intelligence, you know, creative business models, creative manifestation and, and, power, and power brokering, those are the most necessary things today. And a lot of us have antiquated skill sets that no longer serve the current world that we're living in to allow us to modify our effectiveness on an everyday basis. So for me, I'm always thinking of what are the skill sets that I need now that's going to make me most effective. And I, I try to give breakdowns and give people the most valuable skills, but I understand also we have people that think so short-sighted because we got to pay our bills the next day. You understand me? We got to, we got, we thinking about what we need to do for just next week. So here's somebody trying to give you information and tell you that, hey, these are skill sets that you need to combat artificial intelligence in the world so you can preserve your value, giving you literally a, a web mindset and web skill sets. And you're like, that sound nice, Keys. It sound like you did your research. It sound like you did your high level of, of observations. You took in your data. And, and that sound like some great things you observed, but shit, you know, I need some money right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm tired of my job. The job ain't paying me enough. I'm trading all my time for money. Like, that's a beautiful speech you just gave and lecture that I'm sure is very valuable, but I don't even want to trade my money for your program you have because I just want money right now for myself because I don't feel like I got enough. So if I get y'all some money, I can't pay my damn bills. You know what I'm saying? I can't afford that fly-ass outfit that I've been saving up for. You understand me? That I know the ladies going to see me looking fly in and increase my chances of having sex on a regular basis so that I can express my frustrations with the opposite sex. That, that's like, that's thoughts, you know what I'm saying? So when you're trying to give some people some high level game, they don't have the, they don't own their time to take their time and to invest their time in the right matter that will give them more time. You understand me? To give them more comfort. So, because now I work to own more and more of my time. And the money is just a representation of the time. Like this right here, this gold, oh, it's hitting a nice little glare right there. You see that? Then talking about this gold, this is what's considered to be real money. 
Now, not from what I'm saying. Go pick up a Black Law Dictionary. You understand me? Go look at what is real money. Then go look at paper money, right? So paper money is stuff you're going to get from Chase. You understand me? Stuff you're going to get from the banks. Fiat currency, which is not backed by anything, right? And so you start to change your mindset towards things in reality because most of the time we never trade our paper money for real money. We never trade our paper money for real assets. We're, we're not going to different neighborhoods searching for, when we go shopping, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we go shopping, and you, if, if, if I say, Brother Ben, let's go shopping. If I go to the average person and say, let's go shopping, they gonna think, oh, we're going to the mall, right? You're not gonna think, oh, we about to go to different neighborhoods and look at houses. You're not gonna think, oh, we about to go meet up with a real estate agent and look at foreclosed properties. You're not gonna think, oh, we're gonna go and look for digital real estate to go buy up different domains. You're not thinking about the type of shopping that affords you assets and real money. You're thinking about the type of shopping that buys liabilities and decreases the amount of value that you have in your possession. So we literally live an entire lifestyle that is completely based upon, the language that we use is based upon all poverty. You know what I'm talking about? And none of it is towards building wealth. And that's where the conversation changed because the 1% focus on wealth preservation. You understand me? Amassing value, obtaining value, preserving value, increasing value, right? That's where the focus is.